Okay, go ahead. Good morning, good morning. Uh, we're, we're going back to the series, the second part of how Jesus runs the church. We're, we're going to do the second part of how Jesus runs the church. We're going to say a word of prayer first. Spirit of the living God, in the strong name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, we come, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, to all that you have done and all that we realize. Father, we realize that with all your power and all your word and your son Jesus and your Holy Spirit, Father, that if you have not anyone that will respond to all that you are given, that you cannot save mankind. So, Father, prep our hearts and the people that are up under the sound of my voice that we may get an understanding of what you would have us to do, that we may meet the obligations that we're supposed to meet, that we'll be the servants to you to bring you glory. And that we'll be doing in 2020 what you would have Isaiah them to do in their time. What you had Daniel to do in his time. What you had Moses to do in his time. Now make us fathers of Moses and the Isaiahs and the Daniels and the Pauls. That we may hear your word and not only hear it but act upon it. Get up off the pew and be action and representation and ambassadors and light and salt. That we may carry out to a lost and dying world the gospel of the cross of Jesus Christ. And the good news gospel of grace. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, touch some soul, win some soul, heal some soul, restore some soul, straighten up that bike slider. But, Father, whatever it is you want to do, you're the only living God. You're God enough to do it. So now use us to present, Father, what you would have us to do this day. Father, when the next day come, Father, appoint the time for us to do whatever it is you call us to do. We realize there's a servant only every now and then on this road and this journey. Father, because time is winding up and the second advent of your son is at hand. Yes. Father, Lord, we ask and Lord, that you teach the people, Lord, that we are the power yes, of the government of God. And Father, if we don't represent you, yes, no other entity, no other God can. So Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. give us the power to abide in the truth, continue in the truth, endure in the truth. And that we may press our way through all this landslide of filth and lawlessness that's going on. All this falseness that's going on. All that you've got standing in the holy temple calling itself God and is not. Father, teach us how to press through and not get downtrodden, not get drunk, and not get worried. So this is your pro servant's prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Uh, I'm going to go to Proverbs 3. Five and six, you don't have to turn there. I'm just going to call out the scriptures. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Okay, let me read that one more time. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That is Proverbs, Solomon, but God inspired Solomon to write. Listen to you. So now understand this. We, 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 we are in a season where man seems to be leaning to their own understanding, where man has not quite got an understanding of what church is. The church is not the padded pew, it's not the building, it's not the bricks, it's not the nails. Church is the individual that will allow a relationship with God the Father through the Son and the Holy Spirit to be built in the heart of the individual that they may present their dirt, their vessel, to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. Because God needs a group of people in every generation to, to uh, witness to the lost, to uh, pick up the downtrodden, to encourage the widow or the orphan, to, to get that lame or that sick or that blind. God needs a group of people that say, yes, Lord, here am I, use me. The, uh, the building, per se, is a school if the truth of God is there. But if the truth of God is not there, if the pastor is leaning to their own understanding and not acknowledging God, it's not God's house. But the individual that would go into the highways and byways and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, that individual is just as much a temple as the building sitting on the corner, more so. See, because if you understand anything about the Bible, when God started in Genesis... 
He had a very well organized plan. And the plan was that we would lean to his understanding. We would get his yes, wisdom. Sir. We would get his knowledge yes. and not lean to our own because he has the only conversation that we would call wisdom. He has the only conversation that we would call knowledge. He yes. has the only understanding that we would call understanding that is true, absolute, without a question mark. Yes. There is no lie written within it. Not that God spoke. That's why Numbers 23 comes into play. And it's so important because when you go to Numbers 23, 19, it says something. And in Numbers 23, 19, and we're setting the foundation as what? How Jesus runs the church. In Numbers 23, 19, Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Yes. You hear what he said? Let me read that one more time. <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. He does not lie. So now, neither the son of man that he should repent. <clears throat> has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken shall he not make it good? God is not a man that he shall lie. Proverbs 14, 12 says, Proverbs 14, 12 says, listen to this. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end therein are the ways of death. If man... Forms 33,000 denominations in what seems right unto him, but is not right unto God. It, 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 there's no power in it. There's no anointing in it. Because it only seems right to man. Uh, when we understand that the response to God, and I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Deuteronomy 28. Because I want you to see something in your own hearing so you can draw a picture of where I'm trying to get you to understand. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is simply this. God, with all his power in creating the whole universe and sitting on the throne and governing every bird flying through the air, every plane upholding that plane, putting the blood on the moon and, and bringing the seasons and, and furnishing the trees with life and furnishing the bumblebee with life and, and even the snake with life and upholding everything that you see that either is grass or anything that has life pertaining to it, you're looking at God majestics. He's just that big of a God. So as far as you can see from the north, east, south, and west, anything that you can see with life that exists in it, even the water that you look at, anything that has life and has being has to come from this big God we got. Now this is a mighty big God. If everything you can see that has life is attached to him to get that life, to get that breath. Even the sun is out being regulated off of him saying, let there be light. So now, therefore, I don't think we have phantom how big this God is that we're talking about. I'm talking about the God of the universe. I'm not talking about the president. I'm not talking about the Democrats. I'm not talking about the Republicans. I'm not talking about the kings of the earth. I'm talking about the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So now, with all his power, though, if you don't respond to him, his power is no good. And I, and I need to actually prove that. Because I need for you to understand that God has said, not for man to debate with, not for man to lean to his own understanding. God has said. And what God has said is an investment into the earth realm to bring lost people from Genesis to Revelation, how to get them back to eternal life. He's upgraded his system. He had animals in one place that would last. He had a boat in one place that saved the people. And now he's got Jesus. And Jesus is it. See he put Noah and, and, and him in place. To build an ark to save the people. Had him to preach 120 years. The people paid no attention to it. That's right. Then he took Moses. And he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And he said build me a tabernacle. A tent of meeting. That I may be amongst my people. And my people can be amongst me. And tell them to get the lamb. Without a spot or a blemish. The first fruit. Tell them to 
get a dub or a pigeon. Tell them to bring me an atonement, a, a one mint. And when you bring me that at a one mint, for one year it will pay for their sins. He established that so he could be amongst his people. But if the people did not respond to God right, God could not respond to them because, see, his word is absolute. His word is binding. His word is covenant. So if he get a group of people that will say, yes, Lord, and abide by the covenant, then he applies to them what he said would he, would, he would apply if they obey him. Let me prove that. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Let me prove that. Listen to what it says. And we're going to start at 1. Deuteronomy 28, 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou, that means you, shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do. To observe and to do. You notice, you notice how he said that. To observe and to do. All his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God, this is what he said, if you will observe to do, this is what I, the Lord thy God, is going to do for you. He says, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be of the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall it be that thy basket in thy store. Blessed shall thou be when... When thou go cometh in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goeth out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Okay, now what if the enemy came out against me and it was named Corona? <laughs> and I've been diligently hearkening unto the voice yes. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm one of his servants. I'm looking for his mm -hmm. blessings because he's in contract with me and I'm, I'm in contract with him. And I'm responding to him. That does not make me anybody, but it makes me be able to receive from this God who does not lie mm -hmm. and who I'm not leaning to yes. my own understanding, but I am acknowledging his ways. Yes, right. It makes me be in contract with him because I'm responding to him being that he does not lie. He now has to respond to me to send me what he says he would send me if I diligently hearken unto him. So when Corona comes up against me, I would consider Corona to be an enemy because it's not a blessing. And being that Corona is not a a, 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 a blessing, but it is a curse, That's then right. therefore I don't have to feel Corona because mm -hmm. number one is it's working against God. I'm yes. working for God. I stand against Corona. I don't have to shut my church doors mm -hmm. on Sunday morning because when one comes in, there's a thousand yes. going to be put to flight. When Sister Sarah comes in, that's 10,000. The more come in, the more power they got in the church. Yes. And then if one comes in with the Corona, I can bring them to the mothers of the church and they can lay hands and anoint them with oil and they shall recover. If the society ever needed anybody to stand on the word of God, it needs somebody standing on the word of God now, not waving in the wind and waving back and forth and being scared of a virus when you got a big God that sustains the whole universe and you're going to close your church doors when you're supposed to be having faith in who Jesus Christ is. You're supposed to be the church that Jesus is building upon you that the gates of hell will not prevail in and and you are running from a disease. Right. Something is wrong when all the time coming down through the history of the world, there's been epidemics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Please. And Jesus Christ stepped to leprosy when everybody else was stepping back. Mm -hmm. And then he told them, he said, go proclaim. Mm -hmm. He says, all power in heaven and in earth has been given me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then we get up and we look at this one virus in the theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it can destroy people. And we closed the church doors when he told Paul to tell us, forsake not to assemble yourself together, especially as you see the time approaching. And the time is approaching. We done got drunk with a virus. Mm. Ain't got drunk with the Holy Spirit. Don't have yeah. no relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't know God yet. Why? Because you're not studying the Bible. Yeah. The Bible told us these things were coming. And you shall dare you shut your church doors. Because that's the society, wherever your church is located at, that must have been a plan for 
the light to be set on the hill. Yes. And you're going to close the doors and tell the world because the world, flesh, and Satan is working against God. And God is standing up against the world, the flesh, and Satan. And you're going to close your church doors like your God is smaller than a disease. Mm -hmm. That's not the way Jesus ran the church. The way Jesus ran the church was, he said, if you diligently hearken unto me, I got to be a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If he don't get me out on this side, it's going to be all right because he got me on the other side. Where is that John the Baptist? Where is that Peter? Where that Paul at? That they said to, hey, look, bring it on because I'm a soldier. I'm just not one that sits on the padded pew, but I'm one that got up in action. Yes. I take the word of God to believe it, and I allow that yes. word of God to give me power to perform what God said I could do. Not leaning to my own understanding, but leaning to what God said. And I'm standing on what God said because the report yes. said God don't lie. Yes. So therefore, we're standing in this season, and we've already panicked with Leo the seal. Because Leo the seal was neither cold nor hot, and God said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. But he gave you another chance because he told loud my pastor Cecil to tell you this morning, open your church doors. That's right. Because if they any help for your society, it ain't going to come from the Democrats or the Republicans. Right. It's going to come from God. Yes. He just said <laughs> If you diligently hopping under me, yes, did God tell you to close them doors because of a virus? Well, you got to be like Jesus. Here's what John the 14th chapter is my point of reference. John the 14th chapter, Jesus told him, he says, if you believe in me, the work that I do, you're going to do also. Yes. And greater works will you do. Are you looking for the works that you are supposed to be doing in Jesus' name? See, because when Jesus come back, it ain't going to be no time to work out salvation. Mm -hmm. When Jesus come back, that's the second advent. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is running the church now, mm -hmm. and we are his representatives. Mm -hmm. right. And being that we are his representatives, we're supposed to be obeying his voice. We're supposed to be fulfilling <coughs> his voice. It's okay. But, but now, as far as what I want to tell you right now is simply this. I ain't got to worry about how you look at me. I ain't got to worry about how she looks at me. What I got to worry about is can I make it to heaven? See, because I realize time is temporary. Time is not going to be here forever. God's word will last forever. When time stops, God's word is still going to march. It's so, it's so irreversible. God's word is so irreversible that when God said before the end of time, some are going to be standing in winter. Some said, I know my season, but being God's word said so, I got to keep in covenant with God because he's the one that provided me to be what I am. I come and stand in the middle of winter and I don't let it be a winter, but I let it be a summer because God said so. His word is absolute. The only ones that seem to have a problem responding to what God says is those people that want to sit back, created by God, breathing God's air, that want to sit back and say, well, I believe. But the Bible says you can't lean to your own understanding. You got to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4.4. 4. Mm -hmm. That is a standing order. So therefore, when you look and you understand, God said, listen. 2 Peter 1 3 says, I have provided for you everything you need to life. I have provided for you everything you need to godliness. Mm -hmm. All I need for you to do is to respond to me, diligently hearken to my knowledge of what I have given you. Study it to show yourself approved that you may correct, rebuke, and be instructed, and be equipped to be righteous. If you will abide in what I tell you to abide in, I will tell my blessings to run you down and overtake you. I give you rain in your due season. Yes. Whether it be spiritual or whether it be physical, I'll give you what my covenant said will bring to you. What I need for you to do is respond to me. Quit running for me and sitting back saying, I believe, leaning to your own understanding. Who told you to close, close your church doors? Was it the Holy Spirit? Jesus don't run no church like that. Because if you really understand what Jesus did, Jesus said, I transferred all power in heaven and in earth. I transferred it to the church. And in John, the 17th chapter, it said he prayed for the one that had never seen him, but were going to believe in him. And one of the prayers that he said in that passage was, hey, take care of them and keep yes. them from the evil one because they are in the world, but they're not of the world. That's what he said. We are a step above what the world is doing because we are representatives and we believe. He told us that we had the faith of a mustard seed. You can't even see it on the tip of my finger, can you? <laughs> he said you can move mountains. If Corona was called a mountain, 
Where the churches that's closing their doors this morning? Where is their mustard seed of faith? To be sure, somebody would have came in there with a mustard seed of faith. And he said, wait, two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, I could be in the midst. But if you're not even going to bother to gather, I don't even know if you're even in the boat going to the other side. You see, Peter stood on the water. Yes. Peter walked on the water. But there were some people in the boat on the journey with him. I don't even know if these churches just closing the doors even on the journey at all. Yeah, I'm being critical. I'm being critical because I've never heard of such a thing. You believe in this great big God, your pastor twist and turn. Oh, thank you, praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Bring all the tide into the storehouse. And your first little whim of something coming along, you shut the church doors where the power is. The world now needs us. That's right. Are you missing from the poor pit this morning? Teach, Pastor. Go ahead on. Are you running that church the way Jesus ran it? Are you believing in the power of the living God in the blood of the cross? You believe in resurrected life? Do you understand there is no death to a Christian, whether it be male, female, young, old? Do you understand that it ain't a virus? Because what is happening is Satan was allowed to show the virus. And then the church reacted to the virus. <laughs> When the church reacted to the virus, instead of them reacting to what God said, they got drunk with what the virus said. They then took a little teeny thing such as a virus and blew it up so big, it became, big, it became bigger than the God of the universe for some churches. And they'll say, well, he's criticizing us, but the law said, I got a law for you. It's called the law of the grace of God Almighty through his son, Jesus Christ, and his saving and his salvation to try to get a lost people back home. If you close your doors, you're not showing faith in Jesus Christ. You know what you're showing faith in? You are saying, actually, that the, a corona is bigger than Jesus. That's what you're saying. Don't get distracted. Don't react to what the news forecaster said. Don't react to what the president said. Don't react to what the Democrats or the Republicans said. Luke, the physician, 21 in Luke 21, he said this. He said, don't get drunk That's right. with the curse of life. He said, watch and pray that this snare that's on the earth pull you from where you won't react to Jesus so that you can be found accountable before him. Read it for yourself. Luke 21, 34, 35, 36. Read it for yourself. He said, don't get drunk. The thing about it is, we went through slime, swine flu. We went through AIDS. We went through whooping cough. We went through leprosy. We went through the measles. We went through chicken pox. We went, we've been through all kinds of stuff. That's right. Been 2,500 years since Jesus got off the cross. Jesus went through the cross, got up. Put the blood over every person down through the generations after he got off the cross. Every person that has everlasting life, the contamination of sin and the curse of sin has already been forgiven. For whomsoever will that will respond to God. But responding to God is not running from a virus. Responding to God is running to the virus. Because see, God put the church in society. He put the church into society and he said, go proclaim. Matter of fact, let me read a little bit of it. Because he said, go proclaim. Proclaiming is in Luke, the position. He said, go proclaim. Hmm. Luke 4.18 is where I'm going. <laughs> this is in the new covenant. So therefore, when he gets to Luke 4.18, listen to what he said. Luke, the position, which is one of... Luke 4.18. Luke 4.18. You got to say amen. amen. Within the room. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to heal. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. To preach deliverance. Mm -hmm. To preach deliverance mm -hmm. to the captives. Mm -hmm. And recover of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Mm -hmm. To preach the acceptable year mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I came to preach this morning. Mm -hmm. The acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. We, 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 we'll go a little farther. 20. 
And he closed the book and he gave it again to the ministers and sat down in the eyes of them, all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Mm -hmm. This day he has sent me to proclaim freedom. Mm -hmm. Giving freedom and proclaiming freedom is two different things. Mm -hmm. Proclaiming freedom gives you the opportunity to have freedom. But if your vessel and your mind does not correspond to have what he's proclaiming, then you can't have, if you're not diligently hearkening to him, you can't have the blessings. It takes a man or woman, boy, a child to yeah. respond to Jesus Christ to say, I say you're Christ, son of the living God. And he'll say, flesh and blood did not give you that. But my Father in heaven revealed that to you. Upon you I'll build my, my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. you got to understand whether you weigh 90 pounds, 5 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. You are a field of rocks and debris and up under that field of rocks and debris is soil. The word of God is seed. He said, it's not my word like a hammer that will break the rocks into pieces. And it might start out that you got them rocks and that debris on your little plot of land, that 53 cent worth of dirt. But if I keep putting that hammer called the word of God on you, and you keep it setting in that hammer, it'll break them rocks and that debris in little pieces. Up under them rocks and that debris is a well thought out plan for the seed of the word of God to grow a fruitful garden on that little plot of land called man and woman. Therefore, we're not understanding that we respond to God. Mm -hmm. The universe and society responds to us. Mm -hmm. When God came, the earth was dark and void. He spoke, the earth responded. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came, mm -hmm. he spoke, the earth responded. Jesus got up and he said, All power mm -hmm. in heaven and earth has been given me. I'm going to Matthew 22. He said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. And when he said, all power has been given to me, 20, Matthew 22, 1 through 8, 8, we want to read that. Listen to what he said. He's telling the church how Jesus and what Jesus want them to do. And Jesus, yeah, talking about Jesus, Matthew 22, and Jesus answered, 22 went, Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son mm -hmm. and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. You know how we do. We got other things to do. Mm -hmm. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, Tell them which are bidden, which are bidden, you know, man, male, female, created in the image and likeness of God with the opportunity to, to reflect God in their life, to manifest God in their life. Even in a lost and dying society, if I got God in me, it can't help for the nature, for society to see the God in me because it's like a light sitting on a hill. Right. So he's saying, Hey, bid them. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen. I'm giving the dinner right now. I'm breaking the I'm breaking the part of the dinner to the sheep. So so therefore he said, bid them to come. I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage feast. All things ready. He said, but they made light of it and went their way, one to his farm, whatever they gonna do, another to his merchandise. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever the merchants going to do, they went their way. Mm -hmm. And the women took his service and, and, and treated them spitefully and slew them. John the Baptist, even Jesus, Paul, and Peter, them, they slew them. Mm -hmm. And then he said, but when the king heard thereof, he was rocked. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed these murderers and burned up their city. He burnt Sodom and Gomorrah down. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore, listen to what he says. Go ye therefore in the highways and the byways. Mm -hmm. Highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. Mm -hmm. So those servants went out unto the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Mm -hmm. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. Mm -hmm. 
that wedding garment is because this particular man had no service to God. Mm -hmm. He probably leaned to his own understanding. Mm -hmm. Did not do any righteous acts. Mm -hmm. yeah, it said in his heart, I don't need to do all that. Mm -hmm. But see, spiritually, he didn't have no spiritual role mm -hmm. to be at this wedding feast. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of people standing in the church house now mm -hmm. that ain't got no covering to be mm -hmm. In the holy place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They standing up saying, God told me to do it, that I should be an apostle. Mm -hmm. See, but the real deal is, all down through the history of the old covenant, Obadiah, Haggai, Amos, Hosea, Malachi, Zechariah, Zephaniah, have all been speaking to us about people that had shepherds that turned their back on the Lord and began to preach from their own stomach. Mm -hmm. And so he said, being the priest are blind, the priests have blinded the mind of the people. Mm -hmm. So not only are the people blind, but the priest is blind because the priest been teaching the wrong thing. We're now here in 2020 and the priests are standing in the pulpit preaching their little heart out, but they're not preaching the plan of God. They're not preparing his sheep with the portion. So then when, when, a, when the slightest little wind blows, Mm -hmm. The whole church closed the doors. Mm -hmm. Do you think Jesus closed his doors this morning in heaven? You think God sitting on the throne and saying, <coughs> we're going to take a break because Corona is on the earth. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what's happening? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. When Jesus transferred power, and I believe he transferred power to the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe Jesus wanted the church mm -hmm. to carry on mm -hmm. the work that he begun. Mm -hmm. yes. I believe he said abide, endure, mm -hmm. continue yes. till he comes. Mm -hmm. I believe he said go ye unto all, mm -hmm. yes. making disciples. Mm -hmm. yes, I believe that's some of what how he wanted the church to ruin. Mm -hmm. I believe he wanted the church to respond to him. I believe that's why he did not only tell the church to go, but when he said all power in heaven and in the earth has been given to me, I believe he transferred that power to the church. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let's go to Luke 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Luke 10, we're going to go down to 18. Because this is what Jesus did for the church. Luke 10, 18 says, Luke 10, 18. <laughs> and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on all serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, shut your mouth. <laughs> Some church didn't hear that. Uh, let me give you that again. Luke 10, 18, 19. Here's what it says. Oh, we're going to go a step farther than that. Luke 10, 18, 19. 19. Luke, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said nothing by any means hurt you. Now, this is Luke. Let me see what Paul got to say. Let me go to Romans 8 and see what Paul going to say about that. Because we need to allow the word of God to give confirmation to the word of God. And so we're not just going to use Luke because you might think that Luke got some kind of ulterior motive. So we're going to use the Holy Scriptures in more than one place so you can understand God's plan is working absolute. If he has a man or a woman, a boy or a child to believe and how he runs and empowers the church. See, he just didn't tell the church to be the church. Mm -hmm. He empowered the church. Mm -hmm. He gave the church authority. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Luke 8. Luke 8. 29. Romans. I meant Romans 8, 29. I'm sorry. Romans 8, 29. Romans 8, 29. I'm sorry. Now, now listen, real, I'm going to read real slow, because I'm slow. But I want you to get this portion for what power has been to break you off. I need for you to understand. We're going to start at 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, Jesus was going to be the firstborn Amongst many of us. Mm -hmm. He said he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. 
He predestined the church to be conformed to the image of his son. No wonder John said the work that Jesus did we were going to do. Because he conformed us. Okay, I'm going to move on. Then 30 said, Moreover whom he did predestine, he, they, them he also called. That's right. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say? To these things, if God be for us, who what? Who what? Who what? If God be for us, who what? If God be for us, who can be against us? Then he goes on to say, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Delivered his son up for the church. That's right. <clears throat> if y'all not in the church today, you can't hear me. Get on Facebook and hear this what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, this is what Paul said. He says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not? With him also freely give us all things. He goes on so far as to say, if he be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> Listen to what 33 says. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who can lay, who can lay corona on the Son of God? Because it's God that justifies. <laughs> Who can lay anything towards his son? Listen, 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 listen to what he says. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ. It is Christ that died, yea, whether that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Listen to what he said now. Hold your ears open. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Of soul. He said, who shall separate us from it? Then he goes on to say, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than. And all these things, tribulation, distress, mm. sort of pleasantly, and no matter what it is, we yes. are considered. Let me read that because I need yes, you to get that. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Let me, let me say that one more time. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Lord. What you want to say about that? That's the way Jesus is running the church. No wonder he said in Matthew 16, the gates of hell will not prevail against those that understand that he's Christ, son of the living God. The gates of hell will not prevail because there's nothing that can separate us from his love. His love is so... Uh, straightforward that if you will respond to his love with a try mm -hmm. uh -huh, and you got debris and rocks all over your little 53 cent whoop of dirt if you just get up with a try and keep trying and pressing and abiding and continuing and rightly dividing his word that try will sooner or later make your 53 cent garden become fruitful and blossom by the power of God with his treasures planted upon you in your heart and on your mind. So if you're going to run the church the way Jesus run the church, you should understand that Jesus did not have a synagogue. That Jesus went to the highways, the byways, the graveyard. That Jesus went to the ten lepers. Jesus stood at the well. Jesus met the woman in town and, and healed the, the issue of blood. Jesus was on the spot kind of church. He didn't sit on the padded pews, but he said, go proclaim. Yes, see, because in order for somebody to see Jesus now that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, 
He needs to see Jesus in the individual man or woman that would diligently respond to him, diligently believe him, diligently stand in faith on his word, yes. and understand that his word is absolute truth. I don't have to understand and lean to my own understanding. Yes. What I've got to do is take his understanding and about what he said and get understanding from his word. Yes. He will bring his word to pass. If his word is in me and I'm standing upon it, it don't matter who I am because he has no respectable a person, but he's going to bring his word to pass because he's not a God that he lies. That's right. So if I store his word in my vessel, I ain't got to worry about storing Corona because Corona ain't got no business in my vessel because I've been presenting my vessel to the Lord, holy and acceptable, a living sacrifice unto the Lord. So therefore, it does not matter what Corona is doing. What matters is what God is doing in the individual that would diligently hearken unto him. But if you ain't got time and you want to know God, through your pastor or your prophet or your apostle, let's just look at that a minute. Let's just say you got a friend that's single. And let's just say he came to your house and met one of your neighbors and, and came to you and said, Jimmy, I like your neighbor. Can you tell your neighbor I want her phone number? Well, then Jimmy goes and tells his neighbor, my, my friend said he likes you. Can he get a phone number? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, of course. I, I kind of was looking at him at the, at the dinner. So give him this phone number. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he comes back with a letter and say, Jimmy, go give her this letter right here. Uh, Jimmy, no doubt, is going to say, well, uh, Billy, uh, Brother Billy, did she not give you her phone number? Mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, but. But, but, you know, I'm kind of afraid, so I'm going to know her through you. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Brother Billy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, listen, you're not going to build no relationship with Jimmy's neighbor That's right. through knowing her through Jimmy. <laughs> because her knowing Jimmy might make her fall for Jimmy when you're trying to get her to fall for you, that's Brother right. Billy. That's right. Well, that's how that's dealing right. with God is. <laughs> you want to know God. You want to have a relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit through your pastor. You want to talk to him through your pastor. But you ain't never going to learn how he loves you. You ain't never going to learn what he does for you. You're never going to learn the promises he's given you. You're never going to have a relationship with him to understand, to know him and what he has done for you will make you and simply make you fall in love with him. You're not going to understand who he is and what he is because you're always trying to get to him through your neighbor. Can't do it. You can't build a relationship like that. There's been a lot of girlfriend and boyfriends lost like that. I thought you were going to talk to him for me. He said, no, you should have known. You should have built your own relationship. That's right. Well, why is people <coughs> trying to build a relationship with God through somebody else? Through somebody else. Mm. Preach, Pastor. Mm. Preach. When there's a Bible. That's right. Even in the trash dump. That's right. Go ahead, that you can get in hell. Mm -hmm. God's word be true and every man a liar. Mm -hmm. And we are building a relationship with God, supposedly. <laughs> but we're not trying to build on what God said. So I'm going to back up before I shoot over here to Revelation to my last passage. And I'm going to let you look at Deuteronomy 28 again because I already <laughs> told you what you listening to and will bring you. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is if you're going to be a Christian, you got to respond to God. That's right. Let me say that one more time. If you're going to be a church with Jesus Christ building upon you, you got to respond to him. No matter how much power he got, he will not break down the door of your mind That's right. to make you respond to him. He won't do it. you got to be willing to meet him. Because uh -huh. he wants to know you want to marry him. That's right. He don't want to marry nobody <laughs> that don't want him. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Deuteronomy 28, 15 says, That's right. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, then go observe again, okay. to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses, mm -hmm. now, 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 how is these curses coming upon you? Because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to respond to them. Mm -hmm. right. See, you, do you understand what uh, Moses is talking about here in Deuteronomy? It's been a problem all the way through the, through the history of the Bible. 
See, when, when God first went to Lucifer in the first earth age and told Lucifer, Lucifer, you better quit trying to exalt right. yourself above my throne. That's right. Lucifer didn't want to respond. Mm -hmm. Lucifer was saying, look at me. <laughs> and he, iniquity and pride created something called Satan right. from a creature that God created called Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Sin and pride created sin, which created Satan, God created Lucifer. Right. Lucifer didn't want to listen to God. Lucifer mm -hmm. didn't want to respond to God. He became Satan. Mm -hmm. All through the history of the Bible, man does not want to respond to the God. They become contaminated. Mm -hmm. That's right. They, they are cursed instead of being blessed. Mm -hmm. The catch 22 is he will put before you in Deuteronomy 28 life mm -hmm. and blessed, That's right. death and curse. Yeah, that's right. And it all comes from you observing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. That's true. Is that true? Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so in all his power, you got to respond to it. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to Revelation okay. to get an understanding of something. Um, when I start by 1 Peter the second chapter, um, as I'm as you turn into Revelation, listen to what 1 Peter the second chapter says. Wherefore laying aside, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that ye may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. If so be ye have tasted that <coughs> the Lord is gracious, mm -hmm. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Okay. Ye also as lively stones are built up yes. unto spiritual houses. Yes. He ain't talking about the one on the corner. Mm -hmm. He said you were built up into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The reason why I stopped by there is because the number one is if I'm not in covenant with God, if I'm not acting upon the very word that I suck the scriptures from, mm -hmm. I want to ask you the question. I'm telling you I'm lying, I'm cheating, and I'm gambling, and I'm, I'm, I'm making smaller women, and I'm doing anything I want to do, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you, Sister Ruby, Sister Dot, uh, we come on, we want to form a prayer line. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not right with God. That's right. And, and the Bible said the world... Flesh and Satan can do nothing towards God. Right. So they can't have nothing from God. That's well, right. who am I going to be praying to and I'm a liar and a thief? Mm. Who am I praying to? Ain't but two sides. That's right. So I'm going to join in your prayer line and know by the spirit and know by the fruit. You ain't serving the God that I'm serving. You're not right. walking with him. How can That's two right. walk together and set their ring? You're not walking with him. No, I don't want your prayer line. Amen. I don't want your prayer line because you know why you ain't praying to the God of the universe because you ain't made necessary arrangements That's right. to be able to talk to him. That's right. Amen. Amen. So pardon me, but you go ahead on and call your own prayer line and you do your own thing because if I stay in right covenant, if I diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord, if I don't show fear because fear is not of the Lord, right. I can stay in right covenant that when I pray, there's an angel standing in heaven to get my prayer when it comes yes. in. Because yes. Jesus told me in the 14th chapter of St. John yes. that if I abide in him and he abide in me, whatever I ask the Father in his name, whatever I desire for my heart, that he will do for me. Yes. But he also told me the world can not have the things he's given his sons and his daughters. What about that? Amen. But the church is so prone for everybody to be a Christian. The church is so prone that we got so much love and this God is so loving that he'll cover up lies and he'll cover up whoremongering and fornicating. He won't cover it unless you abide by his rules and say, Father, forgive me. That's right. If you're not believing that you have to be forgiven so the blood can re re wash away your sins, and you're just going on being dirty and lying, and you think you're going to call a prayer, you better go to Malachi 1 and Malachi 2, because God said, because your heart ain't with me, That's right. I'll take nothing from you. I don't want your offering. I don't want your prayers. I don't want your sacrifices. I want nothing from you. That's what he said. And they asked why. He said, because your heart he said, because your heart's not in it. That's the way Jesus runs dirt. Build that relationship. I don't care if you're slow and ain't got but one guilt. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. If you use that gift and diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord right. and try to do all that you can towards him in your heart, mm -hmm. he'll cover your sins. Yes. He'll cover you with righteousness. Yes. He'll give you grace, yes. unmerited favor, yes. mercy. And he'll, we, even though you're down in the valley of the shadow of death, he'll put grace and mercy to walk with you every yes. step of the way through that valley. Yes. Yes, he will. But when you get down here to Revelation, he tells you something. Yes. Revelation is the second chapter. Okay. Listen to what he said. Revelation is the second chapter. Thank you. Revelation is the second chapter. Now, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at the beginning of Revelation. It's a servant on the island of Patmos. He took this service until the day of the Lord in the future that has not yet got here. Mm -hmm. He told that servant, God gave it to Jesus, Jesus gave it to the angel and the angel gave it to the servant John mm -hmm. to give to the church mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's, and, and then he went so far as to say if you want a blessing you want a double blessing mm -hmm. he said read this prophecy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said and, 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 and receive this prophecy mm -hmm. he said you'll be blessed to read it Yes, sir. And you'll be blessed to receive it yes, mm -hmm. that what he said yes, what okay said. then he goes on to say give it to the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you look he begins to tell the churches their problems we're going to take one or two of them. In, 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 in Revelation 2, he says, one, he says, unto the angel of the church of Oedipus, write these things, said he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, the angels of the church, mm -hmm. who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, the pastors of the church. I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say that they are apostles, Mm -hmm. And are not, and has found them liars. That's right. And has borne and has patience. And for my name's sake, sake, my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. God is speaking uh, uh, to this church because thou has left thy first love. Mm -hmm. You reckon the church is examining itself to understand whether or not they still in their first love? Watch this. Let, let, let's see what he got to say. Thou have left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou hast uh, fallen and repent. He said, if you repent. He said, he said y'all have left your first love. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. You reckon the church realizes whether they're going forward or going back? You reckon they got enough power to examine it and they say, you know, Corona done scared the heck he be Jesus out of us. <laughs> they probably ain't got enough to examine themselves oh, because they so got so much milk running down their mouth that That's they right. closing up the doors That's when right. society need them. Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh? What did God put the, the He said, don't put a light. Don't let me put a light in your heart and put it on a bush of basket. He said, send it on the hill for everybody to see. How you going to see the light of the church when the door is closed? And the pastor telling you, see that? Let me, let me tell you what the devil did. The devil struck the church. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The enemy caused the church to react. And all those babies in the church that had a momentum to come to church on Sunday... Then the pastor said, well, Corona is out here. We need to close the church doors. And so that person that was, was coming to church, that had a habit of coming to church, that God might have a chance to win their soul, they broke momentum. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, well, you know, um, they closed the church down. And they were, how long they closed the church, once you stop that momentum of going, they'll begin to find other things to do. That's just what people do. They miss us. Right. Now, that word might not be right, but you can have it anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're mysteries. they mischiefs. So see what happened is normally when they jump up and said, I'm going to church, and they press their way. Now, you don't you done react to Corona, and instead of acting to what God said, you don't broke the momentum of your own church. That's right. Okay, okay watch this. Let's, let, let's go on a little while. Then he said, remember five. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen to repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick. In other words, he going to remove your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Huh? Jesus. Out of his place, except thou repent. He said, except you repent, I'm going to move it. Yes. He said, except you see mm -hmm. and go back to do your first love, mm -hmm. but before you go back to do your first love, you need to repent. That's right. That's how Jesus run the church. That's right. 
Huh? See, 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 I ain't perfect. I'm a, I'm a son of myself. I'm messed up from the floor up. But when I repent, That's right. I can endure. I can run on. I can get up and try. <laughs> see, because ain't none of us perfected. Jesus perfects right. us all because all of us is believing in his righteousness, not right. our own. That's right. Go ahead. We take his righteousness and mm -hmm. let his righteousness and believe in what he said as the word and let his righteousness flow through us to reveal him in us, not to reveal. I'm not trying to reveal Travis. That's right. I'm trying to reveal Jesus. Right. I'm trying to reflect Jesus and his righteousness come through me as I obey the word. Amen. You hear what he said. Yes. But this thou has <laughs> That thou has the deeds of the Nickelodeons, which I also hate. He that has an ear, mm -hmm. let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the God. Mm -hmm. He said to him that has an ear. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. We're going to go over the three. We're going to go over the three, and we're going to look at three, seven. <laughs> three, seven. Listen to this church right Right here, three seven. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opened it and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened. Now you know there's so much information in right there, I could just sit there and stay there for 30 minutes. Huh? Because see, Ruby, you know what he's saying? He's saying that if he don't open the door, for Corona to come in in your vicinity, mm -hmm. it, can't it can't come, come in. in. That's right. He said if he shut the door, that's right. It can't yeah. come in. Right. It can't open it itself. Mm -hmm. So it seems like to me, I need to be trusting in the one that can open it and close and that can shut. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's Jesus. go a little bit. Then he goes on to say. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and has kept my word. He said, oh, listen, he said, you got some strength. Yes. Because you kept my word. Yes, God. And has not denied my name. Yes. Huh? Okay, listen. Is that name that uh, the, is that the name that's above every name and every knee that's has the right, yes, Is that the name that's above every name and every demon and devil tremble at? Yes, sir. Is that the name that has all power on heaven and in earth? Yes. Is that the name that gave you power over all powers of the enemy? Yes. Yes. That's the same name. The same. Okay, 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 that's what I want to know. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Watch this right here. Because I have kept the word mm -hmm. of my patience. Mm -hmm. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. That's right. The hour of temptation is five months. Mm -hmm. I, he said, I'll keep you from tribulation. I'll keep you because you kept my Yes, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Yes. They saying the reason why I'm gonna keep you is cause you kept my word. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. Yes. Let me read that again. Because I have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which cometh upon all the world. He said, This hour of temptation is coming upon the whole world. Mm -hmm. To try them. That dwell upon the earth. He said it's coming to try. He said but if you kept my word. My word going to keep you. Let me go step further. Behold I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. That no man take any thy crown. Him that overcome will thou make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. In the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Mm. He that has an ear, yeah, let him name. hear what the Spirit yes. said unto the churches. Yes. Yes. <laughs> God, I thank you. Cause you have kept my word. Yes. I will keep you. <coughs> yes. That means you don't get to debate. Yes. That's right. This is his word right yeah. here. That's right. That's why 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says it reproves, it corrects, it instructs, and it equips the righteous man or the righteous woman to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be the church that Jesus is running, 
If you keep his word, he'll keep you. That's right. After Jesus, there is no other that can keep you. That's right. Only Jesus. That's, right. That's what God deemed and put him out over all things. Mm -hmm. What can separate you from Jesus? Nothing. That's right. Especially not Corona. Nothing. Somebody better rethink their faith hmm. and reexamine what they're standing on. Because if you close your doors because of a disease, seems like to me you are drawing a picture to your constituents mm -hmm. that Corona mm -hmm. is bigger than the God that you preach about in your mm -hmm. pulpit. Mm -hmm. How you gonna make people believe that you know God mm -hmm. and you ah oh, thank you Lord yes 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 How do you think you gonna make people believe you know God when you shut your doors at the first sign of trouble? When Jesus didn't step back from trouble, Jesus yes. stepped to trouble. Amen. Yes. You want me to tell you how I know? <laughs> if you were a true Christian, mm. when you was in a mess, yes. and now you know him, he stepped to the trouble that was in you oh, yes, and sir. delivered you and set you free. Yes. That's how I can prove it. If you truly know him, yes, sir. this Jesus came and found you and delivered you and stepped to the trouble that was in you and said, Lease, lose them. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm. That's what Jesus does. That's, right. That's how he runs the church. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing today and what they call the church. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm not kind of persecuting the church. I'm persecuting the ways of what they call the church. Mm -hmm. I won't back up and, 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 and debate with it. I'm going to stand mm -hmm. on this word because this word is true. Mm -hmm. And it will last to the end of time. This is Pastor Samson saying we'll see you Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. yes.